Uh, so um, just just to give a, an overall, I think you've seen the, the, this, this numbers before, but if you look at the greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture uh, overall, the, the, the majority is uh, um, nitrous oxide and, and methane. And the nitrous oxide is mostly coming from the crop and soil um, management uh, aspects. And then methane, as we heard again today, um, enteric fermentation and uh, manure management. And it, it just depends where you are. The, so the, the split between enteric and, and manure, uh, if you are in high temperature areas like in California, it's about 50-50. And if you are in the um, colder climes, then it's gonna be much more an, an enteric. Um, if, if you look at the sources of actual methane emissions, so now uh, just focusing on, uh, on the methane, this is from the very latest uh, EPA um, numbers. The enteric fermentation uh, has the, the, the highest co uh, contribution. Uh, and then from the livestock systems, you have uh, manure management in there as well. Uh, and then I've, I've seen numbers saying that, you know, uh, livestock has the, the biggest contributor to um, methane emissions. But if you do the calculations, if you add up the natural gas systems, petroleum systems, and coal mining, so all the fossil fuels, that actually comes more than the, the livestock systems. But if you just break it down and you say, okay, the enteric is, is the highest. But if you look at what's the livestock, what is the fossil fuel and, and other systems, then you will see that the fossil fuel systems have the high contribution. And this is actually not accounted for, for a lot of it. So one of the stuff that, that we've done here at the National Academies is looking at methane, where it's coming from. And we have people from the oil and gas industry. And they were saying that there's a lot of measure, they're not measuring a lot of it. All the fugitive methane that's coming in from, you know, from houses and all that, they're not measured. They're not part of this inventory here. Uh, so there's a lot of missing data from the oil and gas industry. So if you if you add that up, the, the, the whole thing here would be quite different. Um, going into the, the livestock system a little bit, um, I like this picture to sort of depicting where, uh, where, where is the sources of, uh, of those emissions. Uh, just the 35% from livestock production, um, about 20% from the beef production. And most of the beef, uh, uh, as, as Al was shown earlier, is the, the enteric part. And from dairy, it's kind of 50 50 because a lot of the dairy systems, the, the manure is stored in a lagoon. And lagoon is quite a, a nice environment, anaerobic environment for methanogenesis. So you, you see more methane coming from dairy systems compared to uh, beef systems. And in and, and pork, um, almost all of it is from the manure side of things, again, because they are managed in a, in a lagoon and you have more, more emissions come, coming from that. Uh, again, this is uh, from, from the latest EPA numbers. Uh, dairy cattle uh, contribute about 25% of the uh, uh, of the emissions. Uh, if you look at the, the different livestock types, about 25% of the enteric emissions is from uh, from dairy, more from from the uh, manure. So the, the, if you look at the manure, the same table in the manure, you will see that the the contribution from dairy is is much more uh, than than beef cattle. Um, you've, you've seen very quickly uh, earlier about the the, the U.S. dairy has a, as a commitment um, by 2050. There are three goals. So the, the one that we're going to be discussing today is to achieve greenhouse gas neutra neutrality, and there is a specific definition for the neutrality as well. So I'm glad that was covered earlier. But what what it means? Uh, carbon neutrality, greenhouse gas neutrality, net zero. I mean, these are all different definitions. Uh, there, hopefully, we, we will have a very comprehensive uh, um, document that will talk about this, about metrics and all that in much more detail. And uh, Dr. Tereski was uh, part of this um, big, big effort. Uh, hopefully, it will be published in June. Um, and and you know, this is uh, a lot of it is discussed by climate scientists. It's not they're not nothing to do with livestock, but climate scientists actually looking into the metrics and what we should be applying and what they mean and at, uh, when we, we need to apply. So here we're talking about the greenhouse gas neutral uh, neutrality that uh, the dairy industry have uh, made a commitment. And that is mostly looking at the non-CO2 greenhouse gas emissions that are associated with dairy production. So what I wanna do in the next few slides is to do some simulation of what it looks like to get to that level. 
Um, so in this case, um, you, you'll see that the, uh, on, on the y-axis on the left is the, the cumulative emissions, the how much CO2 equivalents, warming equivalents we are, we are expecting. On the right-hand side, it is the, the, is the warming that has happened since 1990. So for, for the, the, the GWT star metrics or for metrics other than the G, GWT 100, you have to have like a starting date. It's, you know, it, it, it is a difference in time. So we're saying 1990 at the beginning, and then from 1990 onwards, what has happened and how do we get back to that, to, to that level um, you know, by applying different things. So here, what we're saying is that, so the blue line is methane, the orange line is, is nitrous oxide, and the black line is a combination of methane and nitrous oxide. And so if we were to do a 1.5% decline in methane, we will not get to, to, to net zero, uh, according to the simulation. This is, this is again, the, the effect on the warming, right? So we're not talking about the amount of uh, greenhouse gas, we're talking about the effect on the, uh, on the temperature. I mean, that's, that's, what, what's, that, that's what IPCC is, is concerned. I think that's what we're all concerned is the impact on the temperature. So the impact on the temperature, if you apply this, um, you need to do more than, more than this. And what is coming out really strong, we'll see it in, in all the simulations, is that the, blue, the, uh, the orange line, the nitrous oxide line, that is what's concerning. I think we can probably get, the, we can deal with methane, but the nitrous oxide, and Al talked about it, Frank talked about it, that's, that's where I, I see quite a, a big of an issue uh, we're, we're gonna have. You probably heard about the Global Methane Pledge, and that was to that was put together by the U.S. government and, and European Union to begin with uh, in COP26 in Glasgow. About 100, 100 countries signed up last year. Uh, COP27 uh, it went up to 150 countries, and if uh, and they're saying you know they want to do 30 percent reduction by 2030 uh, from 2020 levels. If that happens, that means there is a, a, a reduction of 0.2 degree centigrade warming can be saved if the, if that is uh, implemented. Um, so we did some simulation on that as well. So what happens if you do a 30% reduction by 2030 and then you do nothing? Uh, well, you can you see that you bend the curve by, by 2030, it, it goes down, but then it stays up at that, uh, at that level before it hits zero. And if you uh, do a 30% reduction and then you go 1% per annum decline, then you're getting into that, in, in, into, into that level. But, but see that you're not getting into greenhouse gas neutrality. And it's still, because of the nitrous oxide, if you uh, add the two, you're still quite high on the, on the warming effect. And then you are stabilizing on that warming. So basically what we're saying here is that compared to 1990, if you do this, you're still gonna be um, at, at 75 uh, millikelvin uh, kind of state. So that that's, that's where you're staying. You're not really going uh, uh, down to, to, to zero. Um, so this is kind of a more extreme kind of uh, way, 50% reduction of methane, and then 1% after that. Uh, but this is conceivable. I mean, if the feed additives that we are working on, uh, that people are working on right now uh, are, are um, approved and, and uh, are safe and everything else, then you know, we could get into this scenario. But even under this scenario, if you don't do anything about nitrogen, we still are not going to be able to get to the, to the greenhouse gas neutrality. So it, it shows that, you know, yes, we can get to a net zero methane. So basically what's saying is that there is no more uh, impacts of methane on the temperature. So we can do that. But the nitrogen uh, idea, I think, is still going to continue. So uh, there's a lot of work to be done to try to reduce that uh, reactive nitrogen. And some, some methods, again, that's already been discussed. I think uh, Dr. Place has already shown the, 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 the same picture here where there are different ways we, we can do. So I don't need to go through that. Well, so one thing is uh, feed efficiency. Again, uh, I'll talk about the importance of feed efficiency in the dairy. So what does it look like in dairy systems? And if you look at this, this graph, um, it's right now we are about 10,000 kilograms of, of milk per, of, per cow per year. And if we continue on this, we will probably will have by 2050, 15,000 kilograms per year is achievable. And um, some, some folks think we can go up to 25,000 kilograms per year. So that's more than double that, that than we are doing here. I don't know if that's uh, uh, achievable or not, but about 15,000 kilograms per year seems to be uh, reasonable. 
Uh, but things are changing because what had, what had happened from 1960 to 2000 was they were mostly bred for milk yield and, and, and uh, fat yield. So um, they were selected for greater feed, feed efficiency. Uh, and, and through that, we get lower greenhouse gas emissions per, per liter of, of milk. But you know, cows become larger and larger and their, their maintenance requirements uh, goes higher. So we, we've done some analysis over 40 years the maintenance energy requirement for those animals is going up and and and, and therefore um, you, you have to pro provide more feed as well so are we able to you know, are they able to process feed in that big amount of feed to produce this amount of milk that uh, that we've seen but there is quite um uh, almost a, an exponential increase in the in the amount of uh, uh, milk production since the, the, since the 1900s and one thing I wanted to point out here is that um, right about here is where things start to change quite a bit. And that is uh, when we have the, the NRC nutrient requirements. Uh, and I'm not saying that's because we are here in the National Academies, but, but uh, you know, the, when we know about the feed formulation and then the, the artificial insemination um, and better breeds, that's where it really starts to take off. Uh, this is quite relevant to the next discussion that I, 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 I want to have. Um, Similar to what uh, Al showed earlier about the uh, what happened over the last 50 years in the beef herd, the same thing in the in the dairy as well. So this is in California where we, we compared uh, 1960s to, to, to 2014 in this case, and we've seen that there's uh, per kilogram of milk uh, produced, we we have a massive reduction in feed and in farm management in enteric and, and manure man, man, manure management not so much because we're using a lot of lagoons, but We've seen that we've seen that those reductions, and overall, you had a 45% reduction in, in greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram of uh, of milk. And this is 2014. If I had to, if I were to do this again, we're probably going to go down below one kilogram of uh, greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram of uh, milk. Uh, this was shown earlier. The the point I want to make here is obviously when you when your milk production is low. Uh, you have the, your impact is is quite high. So what are you going to do? Uh, and, and as Frank showed earlier, about 70% of the emissions are in, in uh, low-income countries. So um, uh, uh, referencing back to the NRC, where the, the feed formulation has really helped in, in improvement of, of efficiency and, and getting more out of the animals, that's what we're trying to work now uh, around the world. So we started this about seven, eight years ago when the State Department wanted to have a low-carbon economy for Vietnam. And so they, they sent us to Hanoi to, to try to figure out what is missing and how we can help the country. And through discussions from the minister level to individual farmers, what we learned is that you know, they, they needed information on how to feed those animals. They needed to have a, a, a Russian, Russian balancing. Uh, and those were available, but they were in English and for different type of cattle. Um, and then also the, the feed resources they have available is also it's not included in the NRC. So we kind of created a new NRC for Vietnam uh, at the time over the last uh, few years and in, in, uh, in Vietnamese so that people can have access to it. And uh, since then, we, we, we started with the dairy and then we did beef and now we're doing swine. Uh, and now we are expanding to uh, different countries. So you see here all the different flags for so different countries. These are already done in different languages. And now we are ex much more expanding it into um, the whole region of Southeast Asia, including India and Thailand, and Indonesia and all that. And, and in Africa, we're adding uh, Cameroon, Nigeria and, and other countries as well. So basically we're trying to launch a global feed formulation software in local languages and uh, using the local feed as well. Um, and in terms of translation of this, actually, with the, with this uh, advent of AI, we may not even have to do the translation. I mean, the uh, GPT-4, you know, the, the the translation is just is is amazing. So, you know, in the next two three years, it might even be really really great. So we don't need to have those translations done. It be, we can we can automate it using either uh, AI. And one of the biggest challenges is also the the, the nutrient profile of the feed that that, that you see there. And we're trying to develop that using a, a mobile phone picture taking and, and trying to um, calibrate it. Uh, again, with, with AI, we will hopefully be able to come up with a solution in low-income countries with uh, smallholder farmers. They can just take a picture and figure out what the nutrient profile is 
and put it into the software and then get it in the language that they, they, can, they can speak so that they can uh, formulate diets. So that is the idea and we are, we are working on that. Um, very quickly, so different feed additives here and that, that, can, that can work. Uh, this is just ranked by, by uh, uh, efficacy. Uh, there are a number of other solutions uh, av available. We've uh, published a couple of pap uh, papers and very recently there's uh, a review that was done on enteric methane emissions uh, from livestock. There was another review that was done on measurement techniques uh, uh, as well. So all of that are uh, is available uh, at the moment. So to, to wrap up, the, the dairy industry has done a lot of uh, improvement over the last 50 years. There's quite a lot of reduction in, in emissions um, per kilogram of milk. And there are some commitments that have been made for 2050. Um, I, I am a little bit skeptical if we are able to, to meet that. I think for methane, um, I, I would say that, uh, yeah, I will bet my mortgage that we will actually get there. But for, uh, for, for nitrogen, I, I'm not so sure. I think we really need to focus a lot more on, uh, on nitrogen. So some of the ways we could do this is milk feed and milk efficiency improvements, feed additives, uh, gen genetic selection. I, I did not touch this, but there's a lot of opportunity for genetic selection as well, and, and then um, manure management. I think with that, I just want to say thank you to a lot of my uh, lab members, and, and Julia is here who is the, doing a lot of work on, on feed additives uh, on, on farm. And, and thank you.